What do this bird, this squirrel, and this plant have in common? I was going to say how this was going to be a very short video, you know, compared to the last one, but we are starting off with a riddle, so it may not be that short. But honestly, let's just keep it under one hour. Wow, I I've set a really low bar for myself. Did, did you want the answer to that question? Well, I'm glad that you do. Literally no one cares, but okay. They were all named to honor the star of today's show, George Finlayson. Well, he's actually not going to be the star of our show today because I don't feel comfortable sharing the spotlight. I thought this was about plants. N no, like... Th this this is clearly about me. Did no one else get that memo? All jokes aside... Catastrophe. Anyways, judging by the title of this video, and I don't really know why I'm pointing up, that's not where the title is, it's clearly below, today we will talk about Hoya Finlaysoni. And I promise we are not going to talk about the birds and the squirrels today. Which sounds like an alternate way to say that we're not going to talk about the birds and the bees. Like, you're very hipster, so you don't talk about the birds and the bees, but you talk about the birds and the squirrels. I mean, just purely in a logical way, it makes as much sense to use that as a euphemism. You know, squirrels, they are... well, not bees, and they are <laughs> very fast, and they go, you know, up, up and down and left and right. Honestly, if you ask me, we should be talking about the squirrels and the rabbits. Okay, this is the last thing that I'm going to say and that it's not going to be Hoya related, but I was really intrigued by this euphemism and I wanted to know when it was coined and it seems that it dates back all the way to 1644 and it was used by some English writer and they believe that other poets picked it up then and then, you know, it was developed as a euphemism. I mean, that's just my way of saying that there was a lot of research that went into this video and most of it was not Hoya related. I mean, I could tell you many more things and recite you poems and verses and whatnot, but I'm not going to. We are instead going to go back to Hoyas. Hoya Finlaysoni was published by a Scottish surgeon, Robert White, and he is the same person that published Hoya Macrophylla, which is something that we covered in a video before, so you can click here if you want to watch that. And I'm not going to get into that because it's a whole mess. Hoya Finlaysoni was published in 1834 when I was just a youngling in the contributions to the botany of India. And the description itself is not very long. And in that publication, Robert Wright presumed that it was from Penang because there was no clear information on where it was collected. Later, Robert White will also collect a specimen himself in Malaysia. When we look at the herbarium specimens at Q, two of them are quite interesting. One of them is collected by Nathaniel Wallach and the other one was collected by none other than George Finlayson. There is a note next to the specimen that was collected by Nathaniel Wallach that it was collected in Singapore, but there is no such note next to the specimen that George Finlayson collected. So of course I had to do a bit of digging and I discovered George Finlayson's journal. Is anyone surprised? I started to read this journal like a year ago and I started to take notes and then, uh, well, my Hoya was out of bloom and I didn't take great photos of it. And by the way, it's not in bloom today as well. It did bloom a couple of days ago and I will talk about this clone and why I couldn't make a video in a day, mostly because it's in the bloom for less than a day, basically. But anyways, to get back on topic, I started to read his journal and I took a lot of notes and then when I looked now at those notes, I'm like, that's very boring and no one cares about that. So, you know, we took a look at George Finlayson's journal once again to see if there is any valuable information there, and it turns out that there is. This journal was not published by George Finlayson because, you know, he was... They didn't cut off his head or hang him, I don't know why I showed that gesture. He was just no longer alive, basically. Um, and he didn't really get to finish this journal, which we will get into. But it was published under the name The Mission to Siam and Hue, the capital of Cochin, China, in the years of 1821 to 22. 
The mission that George Finlayson was on, and he was attached to this mission as a surgeon, was not considered to be very successful. The primary goal of this mission was to establish friendly intercourse between the British Empire and Siam, but also, you know, the objective was to establish free trade, and that part fell through, so <laughs> not very successful. However, in the sense of knowledge that was gained on natural history, it is considered to be very valuable. I was only able to find one entry in this journal that mentions Hoyas, and it was when George Finlayson left Bangkok and he went to Sechang Islands, or that was also known back then as Dutch Islands. The location seems to match to what is today known as Ko Sechang Island and the islands surrounding it, and this is the entry from the August of 1822. The islands abound in plants of that beautiful natural order of Ocinaceae. We found several most elegant species of Hoya amongst them. The plants of the order Euphorbiae are still more numerous. Ficus, several tall species. Was that a great Scottish accent? <laughs> Not at all. We need to get someone on this channel to do accented voiceovers, because clearly I'm not going to do a good job. He also mentions there being numerous aeroids that exceed their normal size, but who cares about aeroids anyways? Not the entire aeroid community coming to dislike this video. Since this is the only place in the journal where he mentions Hoyas, I do believe that it was here where he collected the specimen of Hoya Finlaysonia that we can see in the herbarium today. And trust me, if he saw Hoyas anywhere else, he would have told us, he would have written it down. He was very, very detailed. In fact, he was so detailed that his racism and sexism do not escape me, so I had to stop reading the journal and I had to use the search function because it was a lot. But if you want to read the journal, I will link it down below in the description. But I do not recommend it, not a great read. I do have to tell you this because I find it to be a bit anecdotal, but before he went to Thailand, George Finlayson was in the British Army, and he was also attached there as a surgeon, and basically the same like his older brother, who he admired a lot. His older brother was in the Battle at Waterloo, and after that he marched to Paris, and, you know, he disappeared in that march, presumably dead, which devastated George, so his superiors, to reward him, decided to send him to this mission to Thailand. A mission on which he died. I bet he was quite comforted by that. I think that the Brits need to learn a thing or two about comfort. Just several months after that entry on Hoyas in October of 1822, he did write to his mentor to tell about his bad health, and he basically says that his lungs and his liver were destroyed, and at that point I think he also knew that he was beyond you know, getting better, and it will be next year in August of 1823 that he will die before even reaching England. And I just have to say one thing, like, appreciate the plans that you have because someone most likely died to discover that because each time I look into these expeditions of the 19th century and probably even before that, like, a lot of tropical illnesses, a lot of botanists dying was quite dangerous. Botanist that aside, Hoya Finlaysoni is a wonderful Hoya to have. That wasn't the best segue, was it? It's all we have today. I myself have several clones of Hoya Finlaysoni, and if I could count, I would tell you exactly how many I have, but you will have to see that for yourself. But there are numerous clones of Hoya Finlaysoni out there, I think at least 20, and probably even more. Some of them have locations attached to them, so places where they were found. Some of them have accession numbers. Some of them, I think, are Finlaysoni, but are still unidentified species. And some of them are identified as Hoa Finlaysoni, but they have something like a cultivar name attached to them. And I'm not quite sure about those, if that should be the case. But anyways, I do have one, so I will show you what that looks like. And among all of these clones, I do see difference. And the difference can be something very simple, like in the shape of the leaf, in the way that the leaf looks like. Maybe in one clone, the venation is more prominent than in other. Some have darker leaves, some have lighter leaves. Some grow faster, which is very important. Some are extremely slow. 
I have one that I think is probably the slowest clone of them all. Some of them will bloom earlier, some of them will bloom later. Then you have clones that will have more vibrant colors to the bloom, and then some that will be a little bit paler. The same coloration, but a little bit paler. Some of these flowers have a stronger fragrance, some less. Anyways, there are many differences among the clones, and as you can conclude yourself, the differences can be minor, they can be bigger, but I think it's important to know that the differences do exist. So not every Hoya Finley Sony will be the same. There is one more thing that is different among the clones and it's quite important because, you know, Hoyas are flowering plants and predominantly we collect them because of the flowers. The flower of Hoya Finley Sony in general doesn't last very long. My best one lasts for days, but there are clones that last very, very short. I have a clone that lasts only one day. And I do think this is important for you to know you know, because if you have to wait for a long time to get a Hoya to flower and then it's done in a day, I don't know, maybe consider the clone that lasts a bit longer. But anyways, enough talk about that. I will now show you what these different clones look like. This here is the first clone of Hoya Finley Sony that I got. And I got this one somewhere in the summer of 2019. And you can see here there are buds falling off. So this one had two peduncles that were recently in bloom and they opened within days from one another. But unfortunately, this is the clone that doesn't last very long. The flowers last only a day. So they will open in the evening and, you know, in the morning when you wake up, they will be fully open. But I think in the late afternoon, they will start to close. So really they don't last very long. And it also happened to me one time because obviously this is not the first time this plant has bloomed, that the flowers started to open in late afternoon and some of them were open, but not all of them. And when I woke up next day, they were already starting to close. So I don't know what that was about, but I'm glad that this time I did get an opportunity to take some good photos, which obviously I will show to you. But you can see that this plant has several peduncles here that are filled with buds. So it will bloom again soon. We have one here. We have one there. Let's try not to knock them off. We have two even on this vine in their different stages. And then we have a small one here, which is probably too small for the camera to show. And I almost broke that off. And there is another peduncle here. Again, too small for you to see. Actually, I think this is going to be the first time this plant bloomed with such, with such, I'm missing a word here, vigor? I don't know. Anyways, back to talking about this clone. I got this as Hoya Finlay Sony. It was just sold to me as Hoya Finlay Sony. But there is an interesting thing about this one because it is pubescent from both sides of the leaf. And it's not as pubescent as Hoya Lee, but it you can definitely feel it when you rub your fingers against the leaf like this which I will stop anyways. And you can also definitely see it, you know, when you take a photo, it does look a bit dirty, but it's I promise I, it's not dust. It's actually that the both sides of the leaf are pubescent. And interesting thing, they say there is only one clone that is pubescent on both sides. And I don't know if this is true or not, but they say that one collected in my num is the clone that is pubescent on both sides. Obviously, I'm not going to add the location. I will make one more attempt to find, you know, to trace this clone back to its original owner, but I don't think I'm going to be very successful, but that's a different story. This plant is three years old. It was a two leaf cutting. And as you can see, it didn't grow a lot. The vines are very long. And I think if I was to untangle it, this would be at least three meters, but uh, there is a large internodal space on between, you know, the leaves and it is quite a slow grower. I think in the first year it only gave me one or two leaves and now it did pick up a bit. We have this very long vine and um, we have several actually new 
vines growing and I don't know if this is due to light because it did switch it to brighter light though some people say that this clone doesn't want to be in very bright light but I keep it in my window off to the side of my 100 watt Mars hydro light and in my northwest facing window but because it's all the way up in the window it's not really getting any sunlight I would say especially because there is a mosquito net it's mostly getting the light from that grow light and it has done well this is the again the first year that it has produced so many peduncles there was actually one more there that i didn't see and i do hope they all bloom again when it comes to the flower very very brief another thing that's quite interesting for this clone is that the leaves are i think the darkest among the clones that i have Maybe not the darkest, but the veins are not so prominent. The leaves are very beautiful, and I will show you so you can see. They have splash. There is veining, but again, not very prominent. And, you know, some of them do get lighter, like this one here. And I'm going to try to show that without breaking the peduncle, but again, Nothing exceptional when it comes to veining, I would say. And this obviously unhooked, because why not? I think if you want a Hoya Finlaysoni that's quite unique, because it does look different to the rest of them, I think this is a good clone to have. I'm very happy that I have it, but if you're looking to get Hoya Finlaysoni that will grow fast for you, that will bloom early on, that this is not it. It's not where it's at. However, it is very beautiful. It is also quite resilient. Uh, it never had mealybugs or spider mites, even though the rest of the plants did have them. So it's quite a tough plant. And it does look like quite a tough Hoya Finlaysoni. You will see some other Finlaysonis, but this one does have, I don't know, I think it's the vines. They get quite big and thick. Uh, it just looks very robust to me. It is very easy to propagate. I did get it as a cutting. And I never cut it back because, again, it grows so slow to me. It's really not worth it to cut this plant. But it does produce some nubs here, some beginnings of aerial roots. So very, very easy to propagate. Another thing about this particular clone is that it doesn't bloom early on. I think it took me a year and a half or something to get this one to bloom. And it maybe it took so long because it was not under the right light. It was under 36 watt LED, regular LED light. I do notice that now there seem to be more buds forming, so maybe it is the light. In any case, I still don't think this is a clone that blooms early on, and I'm saying this because I have some other clones of Huefen Sony, and I know how they behave, and yeah, I don't think this is the one that will bloom early, but it's still very pretty. The second clone of Hoa Sony that I have is this Hoa Sony Nova. I do have two Hoa Sony Novas and they look different from one another. This is the one that I got from Sweden from my friend Carolina and I got it I do think last year in May and it grew extremely well. It's a very fast growing plant. I did take a couple of cuttings from this one so it could have grown more and you know my bad trellising aside this is actually again quite a long vine and there are many leaves it's a very very beautiful clone you can see some of these leaves do get very nice and big i'm not sure how prominent the veining will be in that one and i don't know if this is just with my plant or if this is normal but the older leaves do seem to get a bit lighter and that has been consistent with my plant. They even feel, when I touch them, they feel more glabrous than the new ones, which is quite interesting. Like this one feels very, very glabrous compared to this one. This one, I wouldn't say it feels pubescent, but it definitely doesn't have the same feel like the older leaf. So even on the same plant, the leaves can vary quite a lot, which, isn't unusual for Hoyas, especially when you change the conditions, maybe like if you put them in a grow tent and then you take them out from a grow tent to regular house conditions or to a cabinet, you may see some differences in the leaves, which is why we think Hoyas are super interesting. Also, as you change the levels of light, you may get bigger or smaller leaves if you really, really up 
the light. And if you have mealybugs, you will get cute leaves that look heart-shaped like this one. I actually cannot tell you that this is for sure going to happen, so don't go and seek out mealybugs, please. They're not a great thing to have. This one was in bloom quite recently, and I didn't take the best photos, but I will show them to you. And I have to say, this clone blooms early on, the flowers last for days, so it's the best Hoa Finley Sonia for me, but also the flowers, the scent. It is so strong, it gave me a headache. Carolina says that in her house, she cannot detect that scent. In my house, I don't know, it was, I was taking photos of some other Hoas and I also wanted to take, take photos of this one. And I took it out of the cabinet and it was just so strong that it started to give me a headache after like 10 minutes. And the scent was at first pleasant. It's like ginger and citrus but it was so, so strong. The other one that I just showed you, the Finlaysoni with pubescent leaves, also has a similar scent, but much milder. And that one is hanging in my window, so I didn't, you know, I didn't keep it in the cabinet, and I was able to be in the same room, and it didn't bother me at all. It was actually quite nice and refreshing. This one I had to put back in the cabinet. I could not stand it. It was so strong. And, you know, this may be a different experience for you. I'm not saying it is going to happen for sure. I actually had a comment about Hoya... What's your name? I actually had a comment about Hoya Loki because I said for Hoya Loki that it smells like chocolate. And it smells like chocolate to me and to several other people, actually many other people. But someone said that to them it does not smell like chocolate. So take that with a grain of salt. It may smell like one thing to me and a different thing to you. This smell may be overpowering for me. It may not be for you. I, I guess that's not a very useful tip, but uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's how we can match people from now on. Oh, you know what? That would be a great dating app idea. Just match people depending on how Hoya flowers smell to them. You heard it here first. Anyways, back to this clone. Very, very easy to grow. I'm very, very happy that I have this one because it is interesting. I wouldn't say that the leaves are the most decorative, but I do like them quite a lot. And I'm really interested to talk to my friend, actually, if she noticed the same thing about leaves becoming lighter and less pubescent, because definitely when I now look in the light, I do see some fuzz on this new leaf. This one did grow in my cabinet, so you can see this one produced more prominent aerial roots. But even when you look at this plant, you will see that it definitely has a different look to it than the other one. The other one looks more wild, if that makes sense. I actually recently repotted it from semi-hydro to pond. And this clone seems to me that it wants even less water. The clone that I just showed you before, the one with dark pubescent leaves, uh, it doesn't seem to be so tolerant to drying out. The leaves will get very soft and the buds will blast. This one, I know that it lost now some roots because of the transfer from Lekka to Pawn, but the leaves are very, very firm. It doesn't display any symptoms of it being dried out, which would happen with some other Hoyas. So anyways, I think this is just a very resilient clone of Hoa Finley Sony. One thing I forgot to tell you about this Hoa Finley Sony Nova is that it has a slightly paler flower than the first clone of Hoa Finley Sony. It's just a little bit lighter. The colors are still there, but it's just a bit lighter. The next clone of Hoa Finley Sony that I have is my second Hoa Finley Sony Nova. And you can see there's quite a lot of difference. They were acquired approximately at the same time. This one is much slower and the leaves are very, very different. You can see this leaf here. First of all, it's huge, it's massive, but this leaf is very dark and I'm not sure if you can see, there is some splash on that leaf. Very, very interesting. I'm going to try to show you this one as well. I quite like the leaves on this one. Maybe in, on camera they don't look the best. And again, it's a very small plant, so that could be the reason why. But when you see it in person, it's really, really quite nice. I'm interested to know, if you have Hoa Finley Sony Nova, does your plant look like this with splash? Or does it look something like this? 
I think in Sweden this is sold as well, Finley, Sony, Nova. And I think this is something that if you get your plant from Asia, from Thailand, that this is what you will get. The leaves in the beginning were quite crappy. <laughs> I'm sorry, but like, honestly, they didn't look great when it first started to grow. I wasn't loving it, but as the plant grew, it really did develop some great leaves. And it's very interesting, they're quite thin, much th thinner than the other one, but also firm, stiff. I don't know how to explain it. It's a really, really interesting leaf. This one is in pawn, and I think now it may start to grow a bit faster. It did want to bloom for me in the beginning, but I have to say this one had quite a journey for me because it had mealybugs and quite persistent mealybugs. So this one wasn't so resilient. I had to really um, spray it a lot of times with alcohol, but I finally got rid of them and now I hope to see it grow a bit better. It was easy to propagate and again, early on it did want to bloom, but it blasted the flower and it could have been the mealybugs. I'm not quite sure. And you can see we do have a lot of root here, so we do need to do something about that. In any case, I don't think it is the fastest grower compared to this other Hoa Finlay Sony. I would say it's more on the slow side. You know, mealybugs aside, it did have a chance to grow. It's not like it didn't, but yeah, it just is taking its time, so. I hope to see it become bigger soon. I unfortunately cannot tell you anything about the flower in this one. Is it paler or not? Does it last long or short? Does it bloom early on? Uh, but hopefully in the future I will be able to. I do have a couple of other Hoa Finlay Sonys to show you. This one I received recently as a gift from my friend Alex. And you can see this one is quite paler compared to the other ones. This is called Hoya Finlaysoni Lila, if I'm not mistaken, or Lalia. I will write the name in the screen. And I do believe this is a clone that comes from a nursery in Thailand, Alea Garden. And you can see these leaves don't have really prominent veining. These leaves, without a doubt, are Hoya Finlaysoni type leaves. You can see there is veining and just the shape. I unfortunately don't know much about this one except for the name. Uh, I don't know how fast it grows or how soon it will bloom. I do hope it is early on because I would love to see some of the photos that I see online show a flower that is very different in coloration to the regular Hoa Finlay Sony. And that could just be the light, you know, in which the photo was taken. They look quite pink to me, but they really shouldn't be. Again, we will see about that in the future. Hopefully, again, it can bloom soon or hopefully it can bloom soon for my friend and then uh, maybe we get to share the photos. Now, uh, recent acquisition is this Hoya Finlay Sony EPC317. You will have to excuse me, the cutting is upside, well, not upside down, but it grew as a hanging plant, so the leaves are pointing down. You can only really see one leaf here if I remove the tag. And it's a bit dark on the camera, but it is very nice. And it is, again, when we look at it, it is a bit different than the rest of them. I will insert some photos. I think it will be much easier for me to show you what the leaves look like, but there is veining and there is some splash on the leaves. I'm interested to see what the new leaves will look like in my conditions and when it grows a bit bigger. And I have also another new acquisition, <laughs> which is this Hoya Species UT073. Now, this is Finlay Sony type leaf. I don't know if this is Hoya Finlay Sony or not. It doesn't say Hoya Finlay Sony, but it has some Finlay Sony vibes. And there are a lot of plants out there that do have Hoya Finlay Sony vibes. And a lot of times you will hear people say it's Finlay Sony type Hoya. So I do think there is a big, big possibility they are all Finlay Sony, but for whatever reason, they still haven't been um, identified. Probably because, you know, botanists have so many other things to do with Hoyas than identify every um, clone or every specimen of 
Hoya collecting that looks like Finlay Sony to be actual Hoya Finlay Sony. But you will find quite a few of them with the session numbers that will look very Finlay Sony type. The reason why I wanted to show you this plant is so you could see that there is still a difference in the in the way that these leaves look. These are more narrow, longer compared to the other ones. And the veining, I wouldn't say it's more prominent, but there is more of it. I would say maybe it's more packed. <laughs> that's not that's not the best way to maybe say that considering what you know this veining can remind you of. Let's just stop there. Hoi Finlay Sony is also very popular hoi to cross with. And this is a cross called Hoya Jennifer. This is a cross with Hoya Finlay Sony and Hoya Incrasada. And it does resemble Hoya Finlay Sony quite a lot. Very, very popular one. There is a similar one called Species Germany, which may or may not be the same, but these leaves are the most succulent of them all, the thickest of them all. Um, the veining is also very nice, but I wouldn't say they are among the nicest of the leaves. Um, this one is quite nice because it's so dark, but they are quite firm and quite robust. This one is growing in my Mars Hydro Grow Tent, and you can see how big the aerial roots got, if I can get to them. You can see there, they really got quite long, and I do think... I actually think I did cut this one last year a bit and it's very very easy to propagate. Some of the leaves do have a bit of sun stress there if we can see. Maybe not the most attractive I would say sun stressing so maybe slightly lower light but it did you know the higher light did really help it to bloom and to grow much faster. Until I put it in my tent it didn't really grow that fast but now it really took off. It has two new vines and it bloomed on one peduncle, I think. It has several peduncles and the new vine also has a peduncle. And I think if you want a video on Hoya Jennifer, do let me know. I'm going to use this opportunity to just attach this vine here so it doesn't go everywhere. If you're interested to hear something about Hoya Jennifer in a dedicated video, let me know. If not, I will still probably make it at one point. But this one lasted four days for me. You know, compared to some other Finlay Sonys, we can say this one lasts long. I do think Hoya Finlay Sony is possibly among the most popular Hoyas. In every collection, you should be able to see Hoya Finlay Sony. I mean, with people who collect Hoyas. I think, you know, you, we first start to collect what we can find in the garden centers, which is Hoya Carnosa, Hoya Pubicalix, which shouldn't be called Pubicalix, Hoya Lacunosa, sometimes Hoya Linearis, and then, you know, you start to expand your horizons and you discover their beautiful veiny Hoyas. And I think one of the first ones that people get is Hoya Finlay Sony. Now, I think, you know, for me at least, in the beginning, I thought I was kind of over them. You know, I got a couple of clones of Hoya Finlay Sony and I thought, that's that's it, no more. But then I started to get some other clones and just recently I bought these two ones. And what can I say? Now I want more Hoya Finlay Sonys. I don't know why, I can't explain it. But there are very, very nice clones that I have seen. Actually, Betsy, she has, well, I don't even know how many clones she has. I'm, I wanna say at least five, six or 10. <laughs> many clones of Hoya Finlay Sony and you will soon probably be able to see them in her store and I'm not going to say anything else but you know follow her on Instagram if you want updates on that. As I previously mentioned the flowers of Hoya Finlay Sony are quite lovely to look at. They are reflexed flowers and the tip is a bit curved towards the inside. It's very nice to see them open when they start to open. I think they look the best when they are halfway open because, you know, I would consider that they're fully open when they are reflexed. So somewhere in the middle, they look quite nice. And I do think that all of them have this citrusy or ginger plus cit citrus smell. Some of them, again, more fragrant than others, as I said. And some of them will last a long time for Hoya Finlay Sony, which is like four days or three to four days. And some of them will just last for one 
day. When it comes to the potting mix, I do find that they do really well in a variety of potting mixes. I had my Hoi Finley Sonys in Semi Hydro, in Pawn, in Bark and Moss, and I think this one is co in Coco Peat and Perlite, so we will see how that will go, but I am pretty sure that it will do well as long as it is a nice and airy mix. When it comes to watering, you will see for your plant, um, usually I think once a week should be enough. I think this one can go longer the one that i showed you the first i think that one uh, one week is kind of the limit maybe if you have a clone like that it would want to have water sooner and they definitely do need a bit more water when they are about to bloom and i think this is true for all hoyas when you know when you have flowers that are starting to develop and to grow if you underwater them it is very likely that the buds will blast so you know just a bit more water of course you can make a mistake and give them a tremendous amount of water, which will also have the same effect. So, you know, just up the watering a little bit. And I can't really tell you because um, I think this is something that one needs to learn for oneself. And do I have it completely down? No, it will happen that, especially with my Hoya Multiflora and Hoya Loki, that I will underwater them and the buds will blast, or that I will see that they are you know, underwater and give them a lot of water and then the buds will blast, so. It's a learning process or, you know, just use self-watering pots. I think that's the solution. When it comes to fertilizing, I fertilize my plants each time I water, so about once a week or if you're going to be honest, every two weeks. Well, I do try to water the one that needs more water more regularly, but do I always do it? Probably not. The fertilizer that I use is Orchid Fertilizer. It is called Rain Mix. I mentioned it several times, but you can use any, I think, Orchid Fertilizer that you want, as long as it's good quality fertilizer, because there are some fertilizers out there that it's probably not worth spending your money on. So, you know, just try to look maybe in Orchid groups for something that people recommend for something that is a good quality fertilizer. When it comes to light, I would say they are bright light Hoyas. Again, I have them in several different positions. So under my Mars Hydro light, off to the side from that 100 watt light, I have my Hoya Jennifer, which let's just say it's similar to Hoya Pinle Sony in my grow tent. And that is a 300 watt light, but it is dimmed to about 30%. And this one I keep in my cabinet in the back. And I think those are two 17 watt lights and it's quite close to those lights. So bright indirect light is the best that I can tell you. If you don't have grow lights, I would say maybe even in the west facing window, east facing window. Maybe if you have a south window, move it a bit back, but I think north window will not really do well for you. When it comes to humidity, you do know my humidity is a bit higher, so I think the lowest is like 46. Let me just check. 54. <laughs> my air conditioning was on, which dries out the air, and it's 54, so I don't know. I, I think I do sometimes see my humidity go a bit below 50, but it's not very common. I think I would have to have the air conditioning running for longer. In my regular household humidity, which is like 50 and above, let's say 50 to 60 on a, on a good day, it does really well in those conditions. It does really well in the cabinets. I don't think this is a Hoya for 20% of humidity. I just don't think that's very similar to where it naturally grows. It may grow, but I don't think it will grow very fast, and I'm not really sure how early it would bloom in those conditions. So if you have a cabinet or if you have a grow tent, I would recommend that, or you know, maybe try a humidifier or something like that. I really don't think dry homes of... First of all, let's just agree that 20 or 30% of humidity is not good for people as well. I'm not gonna get into it. You can look that up for yourself, but I think, you know, above 40, will be fine for you and for your Hoya Finley Sony. I should sell humidifiers and I'm already almost dressed up as a salesman. When it comes to propagation, it is super easy to propagate Hoya Finley Sony. I propagated them in pawn and these two, they're propagating in pawn and they have been in there for about two weeks. They already have some roots and the Hoya Finley Sony Nova, this one, I cut it back and I just put it in a mix with cocoa peat and perlite in my propagation box and it rooted really easily. So I don't think you will have an issue rooting this in water 
or if you want to just root it in the mix in which you intend to grow it, but just in a prop box, I think that will be fine. I really don't see why you should have issues because as I said, a lot of them do have aerial roots. You will be able to find or at least some nubs that will be future roots. So I don't think you should have any issue propagating this Hoya. I think that is all on Hoya Finlay Sony. I do hope that you enjoyed learning more about the George, but we shall not talk about his journal. And I hope you like those flowers on Hoya Finlay Sony. I do think they're quite cute, but I do have to say, I think Hoya Finlay Sony is more grown for its foliage. If you do have Hoya Finlay Sony, let me know how many different clones you have. I would like to find out. And if you are considering getting more, I do think that probably by now everyone that watches this channel has at least one Hoya Finlay Sony. If you don't, what, what what's up? What, why not? Let me know if it has bloomed for you. If it has, what was the smell like and how long did the flowers last? If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And while you are giving a thumbs up, look a bit higher. If it says subscribe, you are a wonderful person and congratulations. If it says subscribe, well, you know what to do. Have a wonderful day and I will see you very soon with a most likely new Hoya video. Or maybe we will talk about the birds and the bees. I'm just joking. I would like to take some time to thank my patrons. A massive shout out to my $5 patrons. My two anonymous patrons, Alex von Siebenthal, Anne Margaret Moen, Betsy Begonia, Bonnie Harris, Carrie, Cynthia Taylor, Danube Daniels, Estelle Ferra, Gina Geise, Houseman Heather, Hoya Heather, Jacques Planned Journey, Jessica Chio, Kayla Vavra, Kelso, Kristen Sherwood, Lauren Alexandra, Mars B, Martina Leaf Perday, Melissa Walker, Nicole Ferranti, Nicole and Caleb of Schleif Tropicals, Nita Macy, PJ, Rachel Collette Conroy, Robin L. Jennings, Sherry Kumar, Stephanie H2O, Spinach Geek, Tanya, TJWO, Vicky Dingler, Wojtek Takac, Wendy, Wendy Foreman, and Zlokovny Pony. Also, a big thank you to my $3 patrons, Angelina Farnan, and Margaret, Brianna Phillips, Catherine G, Cologne, Claudia L., David Condia, Jerry's Garden, Lisa Helling, Morgan Kennedy, Morgana Devina, Nella, Nerdy Kathy, Plantalania, Ringlov, Shayla Mason Casper, and Tang Watana Surya Cool. And a thank you to my $1 patrons, Brandon Pacheco, Caroline Carey, Erin Keenan, Lauren M, Marissa, and Paula Plants. Thank you all so much for incredible support. Do let me know how many Hoi Finlay Sonys you have. And honestly, if you don't have one, I want to know, and I want to know why. I hope you're all well and see you soon.